Hi Virgo, welcome to your February 2018 single and ready to mingle reading. It's Serena here and I've created a special spread for singles looking for love and let me just lay out the cards and I will describe each position. In this reading I'm using my Wild Unknown Tarot. This is the back and you will see the front in just a second. Oh, wow. See, I'm, I, I haven't done many readings with these yet, and so I haven't picked all the cards. But what a great, what a great card, especially for a love reading. Well, well, two cards fell out, so they're going to be in the history position. Ooh, I'm getting so many major arcanas. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. I even got the lover's card. Okay. Uh, let's see. Am I going to pick three cards for the who, what, when? Okay. should put these up more closer so you can see them. Okay, and this is the outcome. Okay. Okay, so let's see, so you can see the backs of it. That's kind of fun. Okay, so this is the, the card that I got for the central challenge for you finding love, Virgo, is the Sun card. Now, let me just explain my philosophy before I continue. When people tell me that they are looking for love, and sometimes people are complaining and they're saying, I can't, you know, I can't find anybody, da da da. A lot of times I'm thinking in my head, okay, what are you doing or what are you not doing? Don't tell me what somebody else isn't doing. And don't just make it like everything is random that, oh, wow, I haven't found love. And it's just like, like you're finding, you know, a penny on the sidewalk. It's really a dance. Relationships are dances between two people. And for every person who says that they haven't found love, I would ask them, are you a loving person? Are you a generous person? I'm not just talking financially, but are you a, a do you have a generous spirit? Uh, do you have a critical spirit? You're a Virgo. Do you tend to be perfectionistic and see the flaws in someone before you see the good in them? And that could be, actually, in some cases, that can be a defense mechanism because of your own insecurities. A lot of times when people, like, are so exacting in relationships and they, they are picky, overly picky, it's because they don't, they don't really want to get close to somebody and they don't really want a relationship, but they want to make it seem like it's everybody else's fault that they're just not good enough. And I believe in being picky. I, I don't think that you should just like be um, uh, not discriminating when it comes to the a person that you're going to be with. But those are two extremes, okay? So the Sun card is all about um, love itself, okay? But it's connected to Leo. And if you know anything about Leo, Leo is a fire sign. It's very warm. It's very generous. It's generous financially. It's generous in its spirit. Um, of course, Leo has its own flaws. Um, the shadow aspects like self-centeredness, arrogance, you know, there are, there are always going to be the shadow side of every sign. 
And, um, but some, maybe you need to become a warmer person. You may be kind of standoffish. I know I have the moon in Virgo and I, even though my son is in Sagittarius and I guess I can be warm, I do have that part of me that is that emotional part that's kind of a little bit um, high strung and, and uh, critical and things like that. Um, I try not to be, but it's just, you, you, you live with yourself, so you may not realize that you're being this way and that it's off-putting or that it's intimidating to somebody. They may feel that they can't live up to your expectations. And don't get me started. If you, if you know, in your personal chart, if, if you're watching this for your son in Virgo, you may have Leo, and then you may have that kind of, uh, you know, diva-like uh, tendencies with some of these personal planets or something. But anyway, um, becoming more um, childlike, you know, more spontaneous, less guarded, less you know, serious and playful, you know, that's kind of what I go with the, with the sun, you know, this, in the um, Pamela Coleman drawing in the, in the uh, Rider weight deck, they show a child on a horse or something, because it is that kind of free, freewheeling behavior and thing that makes you seem like you're fun, that you're not a stick in the mud, that you're, that, that another person could feel comfortable around you. Now let's look at the history to see what may be, you know, leading to your um, challenges or what have you. One of these cards is the High Priestess. Um, this is a card that can connect with um, perhaps having situations where someone kept things from you. And so maybe you have trust issues. Maybe you had uh, a partner or a series of partners who were deceptive. Um, you know, it's interesting, your opposite sign is Pisces, and that um, Pisces and its ruler Neptune is all about deception and, you know, um, mischaracterizations, <coughs> excuse me, and things like that. And so you may have experienced that in your life, and it's making you wary, it's making you kind of be on edge, and, but see, then you anticip anticipate it in others, and, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's really what the Law of Attraction is all about. Also, the Magician card. Um, you may be so used to relying on yourself and feeling that sense of um, autonomy that you have a hard time just surrendering to the process. Maybe you're trying to make it happen too much. Uh, trying to control outcomes. One thing I will say, though, is even though this is the central challenge, the sun, the sun card is probably the most po uh, positive card in the deck. So don't look at it as a challenge. Maybe it's a blessing. And maybe the magician card is you understanding more about your um, control over, I mean, your your control over your your outcomes in terms of attracting a certain partner. Maybe in the past you did feel more like you were at the mercy of life and now you feel a lot more 